Ege, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, maybe we start with the PMI, uh, and many will suggest quite surprising that we are seeing that sustained improvement in the PMI numbers for manufacturing. Um, how do you read that development? Because m many will point to the economic conditions as being really harsh at the moment, and that perhaps um, some manufacturing companies should be struggling. Well, I mean, the, a lot of that data, I think, is re referenced in December activity. The survey was done in January, so right. I think um, maybe when you see the survey for January or February activity, then you can have a, a better picture. But some sectors are still expanding, but some were mostly expanding at a slower pace than they did in December. All right. Of course, what happens in the fixed income markets will clearly impact manufacturing and other businesses in Nigeria. So let's d dig into that. Um, clearly, all I'm hearing is about the liquidity in the market and more liquidity coming later on this month. And the challenge for the authorities, the DMO and the central bank is to extract that liquidity. We've seen a move with a hike in the cash reserve ratio um, at the last MPC meeting. But as we move further into February, how do you see things playing out this month? Well, I think February probably has the most amount of maturing instruments uh, for I mean, in the past year. Um, you've got 606 billion in federal government bonds, and then you also have over two trillion in home bills. Mm -hmm. So clearly, um, it seems like a problem. But when you look at the DMO auction last month for federal government bonds, they wanted to do about 155. They did 410 billion. If they keep running at that rate, um, they'll take out a lot of liquidity just with one auction. Uh, bear in mind that the people who own automobiles that are like pension funds, they'll probably rotate into FGM bonds, which is why we saw the spike in the sales in the last auction. And the banks can roll into automobiles if they want. Mm. The question is the foreign investors that are holding automobiles, will they, will they agree to roll over at the current rates, which are trending down slightly, given mm. all the risks around oil, currency, and all that. That's really the, the, the big test for the central bank. Right. Of course, the central bank will be monitoring that, if you like, um, carved out OMO markets, and we'll see what, how they react to foreign investors' um, reactions to the oil price decline. But I want to get your thoughts on another point here, and that is on the prospect for weakness in the currency. Now, clearly, historically, you would think that the, the Naira would weaken when we have lower oil prices. Now, with the, how things are playing out with the coronavirus outbreak and its impact on oil, do you think that pressure is significantly more, it's considering the fact that the central bank governor has assured that there is no cause for alarm yet? Well, I mean, so far nothing has really suggested that there's any any pressure anywhere. If you look at the black market rates, they have actually come down the past two weeks. Um, uh, into um, transfer markets, which is a totally unregulated market, hasn't really moved. Mm -hmm. So clearly, there could be a problem down the line. But you have to bear in mind that a lot of the reserve numbers you see. Are, um, they lag the current oil price. It takes about two, three months for this drop in oil price to start hitting reserves. And there's also, also a good chance the federal government issues a, a euro bond uh, sometime this quarter. Mm. And that on a temporary basis will plug uh, the reserves. But yes, if, if, you, if you continue at these levels, there, there could be a problem later in the year. Mm. The pricing of that euro bond will be interesting because given the, the dynamics we're seeing in the local currency debt markets, Many are suggesting that it is possible that we could see um, the yield for that euro bond being higher than the local currency bond yield. But we'll see whether or not that plays out. But I think an interesting dynamic to watch out for is the shift to the longer end of the curve as we're, we're seeing all this liquidity, searching for yields, now moving more into bonds. How do you think this will impact one liquidity in, at that end of the curve? Because many have suggested that liquidity hasn't been um, greatest at that end of the curve. Do you think that we have a new normal now with a lot more liquidity on that end? Well, I mean, for the next month or two, I mean, the, 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 the long-term investors who are pension funds and the life insurance companies will keep piling into that end. Like, the challenge is that once you get into, uh, like, March, April, the amount of liquidity entering the system is dramatically less. Mm -hmm. And the question is, if the momentum in that market reverses, what happens to, to the bond yields and prices? So. Investors in that space obviously have to be very careful. At some point, there'll be a, a reversal and prices will go down and, and yields will Do you up. anticipate that yields are going to go even lower, given the liquidity that we're, we're expecting this month? In, in the month of February, that, that's very possible at the long end. But at the short end, um, yields are actually going up. So at mm -hmm. some point, 
the yield curve will flatten out again probably in the next two months. Right. But do you anticipate that we'll see single digit yields across the curve um, at least into March? Well, I mean, we're already at single digits for anything below four years, right? Mm. So, I mean, you could get maybe five years, seven years, but not much more than that. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see how things play out. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I've been speaking to Egea Pata. Um, he's been giving us his thoughts on the dynamics in Nigeria's fixed income and forex markets.